Hello there, fellow Knuckleheads, and welcome to the latest edition of Schmodown Night in Canada. Boy, have we got a banger of a match to talk about this week. Uh, so, as usual, I am your friendly neighborhood soda, and once again, I am joined by the man with a plan, I think. Dave. How's it the going, plan, Dave? The plan tonight is to laugh at the word knucklehead. That's just a fun word, isn't it? Yeah, have you ever heard that before? Y you know, I have. 90... 90,000 percent more since I've started hanging out with you, Soda. Okay, so I first, very first heard it uh, when it would have been 2003 when The Rock turned heel, and he there was a raw taping in Canada, and he called the Canadians knuckleheads. I've been using that ever since. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm happy to be on at least the first first part of the show show today because we have fantastic stuff to talk about today. Yes, we do. Let's dive into it. We're because it is. The big match, we're going to dive into it first. That was the finals of the Star Wars tournament. We had the hunter, Andrew DeMolanta, facing the ultimate underdog, Andreas Ace Cabrera. And holy shit. This was, you know what? This was the finale of Rocky 2. This was both getting up and, and mm -hmm. uh, Rocky beating the 10 count. Andreas beat the 10 count. Man, I feel so bad for DeMolanta. Like, just the last question again. I, man, that was an intense match. And we've had some amazing matches so far this mm -hmm. year. But this truly, truly, sometimes tournament finals can be a bit of a wash. You think back yeah. to Odd or uh, Who's the Boss versus Harris Brothers as like, all right, that's kind of a thing. But this nail biter and i thought it was gonna go down just like ace's match against laura kelly where it came down to just that one question in round one miss but yeah. man no nope. what a there match the one question at the worst possible time mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. back and forth back and forth every time ace would gain a little bit of ground if Atlanta would hold him back it's just it was just knock down drag out i'd say top three matches of the year for sure oh if not match of the year so far you know what? It's hard. It's very hard not to say that that this could be match of the year. Yeah. Maybe it's just because we've been so deprived of title pictures so far that I'm really excited to see a number one contender and the new format's interesting and just yeah. all the all the energy is just so good. But man, and yeah, it's hard not to say it. Yeah, no kidding. And, and, and what a scenario if. Uh... Andrew had hit his five, he would have gotten 40 points, which would have been the record. Yes. Well, it's, it's a little inflated as yeah, the numbers the guy round, here. Yeah. The, well, no, it's a little inflated just because of the new speed round. Okay. Because before there was only a potential five point bump. If you got all of them correct and your opponent got none, but now there's a potential for 10 point, a 10 point bump. Okay. Because now there's 11 points available in round round number one with a perfect, mm -hmm. 10 points in round number two, three points in round number three, 10 points in round number uh, four, four, and then four, ten, five. five. So yeah, so the like, it, it's insane the amount of points that are potentially on the board, and board here, right? Like yeah, oh my gosh, Jamalanta should not be hanging his head, his head in shame. He played an excellent excellent match i i don't think you can say anything else other than the word excellent last week's episode of schmodown night in canada soft plug was called absolute perfection but i think that that's what we witnessed here today and it may have not been the most technically proficient most points scored possible game but god perfection of a match because you look at Dame Melanta coming in, and he's just a stone cold mm -hmm. killer the he's entire time. He's a hunter. He is hunting his prey like Bosk for all mm -hmm. you Star Wars fans out there. But and then Ace, he's bringing, like he said, he's bringing the fire. He's bringing the laughs. And I love Winston the entire way through the match, oh, yeah. just saying, "Hey, man, just relax. Just have a good time. You're the only guy." I'll that's having a good time out here. 
Yeah, and that's that's what it came down to. Like that is the big difference between Ace and Dimelanto. Is Dimelanto was like zoned in, you laser focused. He uh, wants to win. Ace was just like, hey man, let's have some fun, and it really <laughs> showed. And I think it helps to just be loose. Yeah, it really it really does, and it shows. If you had told me in the beginning of May or beginning of June, when did the Star Wars tournament start again? Beginning of June? Uh, Beginning of yes. late May? Late May? Late May. Let's say yeah, late, May. late May. If it's not, if it's not who I'll correct it and I'll correct it in post. Overdub. Who knows? But the if you told me Ace Cabrera, who's doing a play in match, who just got his ass handed to him by Parker, is gonna run the table, run the gauntlet of killers, Knapsack, Kelly, Damolanta. I would have told you, you know what? I have some oceanfront property on Tatooine I can sell you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you this. If Ace wins the title, is this a better run than <clears throat> Sam Levine? Sam Levine single run. Because I know he had the teams in the singles a couple years ago. See, that's, that, that's the problem. I think a more... <sighs> it, 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 it's tough because Sam was doing it in two divisions. Mm -hmm. I think the... Com Comparable person here is Kevin Smets. Okay. Now, Kevin Smets is Bateman. Bateman last year. The, uh, yeah, that's fair. I was thinking more from a rookie year oh, year because okay. this is his. Even though he played as on the B team, this is really his rookie coming out party, and he mm. probably won't qualify for rookie of the year just because he had the B team appearances um, or appearance. And, but this is such an impressive run. This is Smets on his way to Kalinowski if Smets had been able to beat Kalinowski the first time around. Okay. Yeah, I understand yeah. that's how the metaphor got lost. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I, I get it. Except I don't think Ace had his don't tell Peter moment. I think he did, honestly. And it was in this match. And now and is a good time as any. It was Darth Maul, I think. Yeah. That is like what prequel Zabraxian is like. I can name two Zabraxians in or three Zabraxians in all of Star Wars, and only one of them is in the movies and has I speaking was lines. Today, years old when I learned that Darth Maul was a Zabraxian. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of anyway. We're not here. We're not a Star Wars podcast. Yeah, you we're know, actually, I do have a podcast. question. It's just like uh, you. It's just a hypothetical. But when you're studying for Star Wars match, like you have to like read all the source material, all of it, to get the names of these characters. Because where were you find the name of that stormtrooper that was supposed to guard the Millennium Falcon? That's not in the movie. Well, that is in the movie. I, I don't want to be that guy, but it's okay, is uh, it? the is, one, is it the one said? general. Yes, because the one guy is like, TK, whatever, whatever, why aren't you at your post? And then he comes out and gives the salute. Okay, but well, what about the Zabraxian thing? That, like, again, the Zabraxian... I've seen Clone Wars once. I'll give you that. Yeah, I'll give you that. That's nowhere in the movies. Yeah. But it's a thing that you have to be reading the source material, and this is a good time to say, uh, to talk about some other appearances. Alex Damon was on uh, Schmodown Backstage, I believe it was, yeah. this week, talking about how the parking violation ticket number you can only find if you watch the movie with the subtitles on because it's just in the muffled background. Really? Yeah. So that's oh. the kind of studying which is, Star Wars is so intense. And but that's just what's so impressive about these guys because first round, nine points, 11 mm -hmm. points. Second round, 10 Perfect. and 10. Yeah. Three points for for each of them in the uh, third mm -hmm. third round with the betting round. I believe it was uh, – I don't have the numbers. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but th an impressive round round in the speed in the speed round yeah. where I this may actually be a good good time to uh, break it down before we move into the final round. What do you think of the new speed round format? I like it. I like it because it forces you to think on your toes. I I also really like it. I think 
the my only issue with it is I found myself not listening to what Ace was saying because I was still trying to figure out how many did Damon want to get? I wish that was a, I understand why they don't say it out loud because that could somehow be communicated to another player to be like, okay, I only have to get five or whatever. Yeah. But I, I'd like it to somehow be easier for us to understand. And I love the addition of being able to say pass because that, because I was originally thinking like, oh man, if you don't get it, you're going to be penalized. But when Mark says you'll never be penalized for the saying the word pass, I was like, I was so happy happy about that especially because all week i've been describing it as you ever seen the last round of family feud and then when mark came out it was like last round of family feud kind yeah. of works like that i was like i did it i called <laughs> it yeah you had a you had a you mind melded with uh ellis there yeah oh it's it's a great it's a great thing to do for these type of matches we're getting but unfortunately i don't think it's one that would be sustainable in uh in studio no in studio i think it we're Say say they went back to studio tomorrow. I think buzzers are back, and yeah. I think buzzers are the superior way to do this, especially from a production side, because otherwise you got to be like, okay, now you two. Let's say it was a teams match. It's like okay, uh, founding fathers, Bobby Gucci, anybody associated with the Finstock Exchange, get up from the match, go into that other room. Once we know yeah. everyone's in that room. Now we're going to ask the questions. Now, all right, corruption, here are your questions. Okay, now you're done. Corruption, Shannon, everyone are related with corruption. Get up, yeah. leave. Nobody talk to each other while we have that cross talk. So I just think buzzers are the superior way to go, but I understand why they can't do yeah. it. And I think this is a really interesting workaround that I am excited to see more of, especially as it gets fine-tuned. Yeah, there have been a lot of great additions to this uh, post-COVID uh, schmodown. Um, some of them, one of them for sure, I hope it stays. It's oddly enough, that graphic that we see whenever uh, he says, let's get ready to schmodown, I like that. And I really, really wish we would continue to see the managers do their work between rounds. Yes. That one I don't know, but I would love to see that. I think that is a great point. And I think that if anything... Uh, this match really shows why that's important to show us because I think back to like February, I think it was where Roxy was on backstage and she said, I think managers should always be miked. If we were yeah. miked, I would have won manager of the year last year. And I'm like, how much are managers actually doing? But then you see it because Ace, you see him start to get a little rattled. I think yep. uh, at when they're going before they go into the speed round, but then there's that. Oh, hey, my mic. But then there's that calming presence that Win Winston brings and just washes over him. Yep. Let it go, and, baby. Let it go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude, can we break? It's just should, how much time should we spend breaking down Winston Marshall's dancing abilities uh, for his I 60 love seconds? Winston. I love Winston. Uh, quick sidebar Did you get a chance to see Hamilton yet? I, I did. Okay. Somebody in one of the discords I'm on compared David Diggs to Winston Marshall, the one who played the guy who played Thomas Jefferson. You you <sighs> can see it, right? That's so perfect. I yeah. hadn't put that together. I can see oh my gosh. This is not a Hamilton podcast, but I could go on and on. Yeah, um, me too. I loved it. I was hooked after song too. Uh, yeah, but I've been listening to that just tangent, been listening to the soundtrack for four years now. So oh, really? oh I, yeah. We in in community band we actually got the sheet music and that that would have been two years ago and that was the first time I tried I could get into it because I'm not really into hip hop it's just not really my jam but once I saw it in context with all the visuals mm -hmm. and stuff I I was hooked right away. Mm -hmm. And does what species is Alexander ha Hamilton? It's not as the Braxian. No, it's uh, <laughs> a Caribbean human. You know, we're all the same species. Yeah, no, he. Yeah, I know. I know. No, uh, I, I did some reading. He actually was born in the Caribbean, so I was like, "Oh, that's cool." Yeah. Uh, anyway, so back to the match, the the final round. What did you feel going into that last round? How did uh, you feel? Honestly, I I thought 
Ace wouldn't be able to overcome his misses, miss in round one. Because that's just the way it's always played out with these other matches. Is you miss one question early on and that's it. But then, you know, the five-pointer for Andrew and is like, ugh, just a kick in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, I I totally agree agree with you there. But I had a it was a roller coaster for me. It really was because going into the uh, when Gucci and Tommy Versace when they were on screen, <laughs> I like that. I really did. That that that, that was fun. When they were on screen, I was like, you know what? It's going to happen to Damelanta again. Oh, really? I was having I was having flashbacks to uh, his match against Laura Kelly last season, where leading, 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 and then five pointer. It's like, oh, hey man, rough. that five pointer was tough. But then instantly, I was like, all right, Damon has got this TKO. When Ace missed Zabrax, when he couldn't say pull Darth Maul, yeah, I was especially when the the category was villains. It's like, okay, so there's four. It could be uh, Grievous, Sidious, Dooku, or Darth Maul. Two of those are humans. Mm. So you only can say two others. And I was like, Ace has got this. Obviously, he's got this. But then when he can't pull Darth Maul, I was like, that's it. Dame Melanta, he's yeah. winning TKO, Finstock Exchange. I don't know why I ever doubted doubted them but then he bounces right back he looks upset but then he picks himself back up yeah and do you know what that's the makings of a champion it um, really is like like i said earlier when we opened this was the fight from rock rocky 2 because you could tell you know apollo creed had had rocky all the way through and then the tide started to turn rocky gets knocked down you can see he's very pissed off but you know what he gets up and then uh, Mickey's like, you know what? You gotta, you gotta change your tactics. Rocky says, nope, I've come this far. I'm sticking to it. And lo and behold, it works. And Rocky mm -hmm. wins the title. That's Ace Cabrera is, you know what? I'm gonna say it. He's the Rocky of the Schmodown. John another, Roca th well, will have another thing to say to you. Well, no, if, honestly, if you think about it, he lost badly his first match. He was in a play in match. Nobody expected him to win. And then he goes 4-0 all the way through through the thing. Was the consummate underdog every match. Nobody picked him to win. And then he comes from behind and at the last second beats him at the, the final question. I can't think of a better movie character analogy. Neither can I, but I'm not brave enough to say that John Roca is not the Rocky of the Shimoda. Out of fear, he will come through my monitor Oh, and no. yell at me like he did last time we had him on the show. Roca is Apollo Creed. And Apollo Creed in that movie universe is considered one of the greatest fighters of all time. So that's not, that's know, nothing to sneeze out. Sneeze at. So to, we're, we're getting in a great uh, off-season podcast right now. Where I'm like, I'm like well, Dan, obviously Dan's Apollo, Apollo Creed. Dewberry's uh, uh, Makuga's Thunderlips. And it's yeah. like, that's just, <laughs> hey man, that's just, I'm, I, you know what? I'd be up for a Rocky podcast. Rocky is my favorite film series. I've been watching those movies since I was like three years old, way oh before my, I probably should have. Oh my gosh. You know what? Yeah. So, so to, we'll, we'll talk about this off air. So now Ace wins the tournament because Dame Alanta can't pull the torture droid from yeah. uh, episode six, which is can't make it to his feet. Yeah. So so tough. Yeah, right. So like, tough. Even Ace was like, "Fuck!" Like he didn't it appeared. He didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting because, like, that's another thing where it's like no one ever talks to that guy. That that's a background. I think you see it yeah. for like he pulls the lever. He's torturing the gong droid. First, you gotta know what a gong droid is. But I guess if you're playing Star Wars, you know what a gong droid is. Thank you, Lego Star Wars video games. Thank you, Battlefront 2. That's where you oh, stand. Yeah. You stand next to that guy, he gives you ammo. Which Battlefront 2? We talk in the old school X PS2. Uh, PS2, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm I'm young soda, but I'm not that young. I, oh, I may have been playing new Battlefront 2 yesterday. I played old Battlefront 2 
years ago also. Hey, man, I know from um, your age, you don't even know what a cassette tape is. That's very... Did they not watch... Okay, okay. We're yeah, now we're getting... Yeah. We are pitching so many <laughs> off-season... We just need a Soda and Dave podcast for, uh, you know, talk in the comments. Tell us if you want a Soda and Dave podcast. Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah, just tell us in the comments. Um, anyway, Ace wins the match. Swag now, very interesting. I want to talk about this for a second. Yep. Is that only three points away from the Finstock Exchange? I know, right? Holy, holy crap. Like, that, that's, that's mind blowing. Well, that's like, actually not correct. Either way, they're close. <laughs> they, they are, and it's so interesting that, again, maybe he is the Rocky. Ace has really been the linchpin of this whole... See, if Ace does not come out and perform as well as he does, the Finstock Exchange has, like, a 10-point lead right now over the Den yeah. Swag. I know, right? It's just like... And honestly, no, again, it plays into the Rocky comparison. Nobody would have thought Ace would have been the guy. No. I... Oh, man, I am so uh, plug for an upcoming uh, episode of Northern Consultations. We're gonna talk to Ace. We're gonna talk. We're gonna have yes, Ace on. Yes, we are. Yeah. Oh man, that's actually gonna be so, exciting. So keep an eye eye out for that one. Um, do you think Ace Cabrera has what it takes to dethrone Damon? Yes or no? Right now. Yeah, I think he does. I I would agree, and I wouldn't have agreed. Until Damon came on the screen after the match, and he all passed, he said, "Did you know Andrew's five pointer?" And Alex very nicely said, "Yes, I don't want to kick one of these down, but I did know it." But he said he did not know aces, which is so. It, it's those things where somehow. Ace just has this magic about him that I don't want to see put out ever. Yeah. Now, he's the and, he's the consummate good guy that you can't help but root for. I know, and I'm going to be so heartbroken about in that match deciding who I have to cheer for because I'm such a big fan of both both of them. Yeah. Um. 100%. Ace has won me over, and you know, with Damon being like the uh, the dominating champion, it, it, he is. Yeah, you're right. It's gonna it's gonna be hard. My heart will probably go with Ace because. I love a good underdog story. Again, I guess it comes from my love of the Rocky movies. Um, mm -hmm. That always, I always Stanley Cup Finals. I always root for the the underdog team. If like, say, the number eight seed goes in, whatever. This, just, I, I love a good underdog story, and Ace has proved to be a very damn good underdog story. I don't, I, I, I don't have the mental fortitude right now at this moment to even say who I'll be rooting for. Yeah. That's a discussion for down the road. But before we move on. News from uh, the chairman, the commission, the chairman himself, mm -hmm. De Malanta is waiting in the wings now with a title shot. Yep, and you know what? Well deserved. I mean, the way that, like Harloff said in the in the post game, the way it was designed, you essentially you win a game, you get have a title shot if you play somebody who's already played before. De Malanta won two matches in the tournament. That is an automatic title shot in this league. Yeah, I I totally 100% agree with you. A lot of people, uh, including myself, gut reaction right after the match, were like, well, obviously he should play Laura Kelly. But then it's like, no, because she only won one match. Yeah. So, like, she should probably play Molly, and the winner of that should probably play the whole, and I don't even figure, no. But now, it's going to be interesting next season how this looks, because the system in which is in place now does n I doubt will work next year? Yeah, where I think because we have a lot more competitors in the Star Wars League and we have a lot more people vying for that, I think we'll get a few more matches. Harloff announced he's excited about doing another tournament next year. Um, yeah, this is just it's an exciting time. I love tournaments it really is and this is this is what the inner geekdom tournament a couple years ago was we've you know it, it just showed us what exactly the star wars league could can be it gave us new unexpected stars it mm -hmm. really it really is i kind of feel i know everyone hates this movie but i kind of feel like broom kid at the end of the last jedi 
you know, looking on the horizon is like, hey, there's a bright future ahead of us with this division. So if there wasn't, if we weren't, if we hadn't already wasted so much time and I, we weren't pressed for time, I'd do a thing where I dropped you from the stream and it was just the Dave show. <laughs> but we are on a schedule. You but are we're going to keep it. I guess you're not a fan of The Last Jedi. You know what, Soda? This is not a Star Wars podcast. No, you want to talk about that? That'll be the first episode of the Soda and Dave Dave show talking about The Last Jedi. Hey, man, I'm down. I'm one of those guys. I don't hate it, but it's not one of my favorites. Oh, okay. That, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, do you have any more thought, thoughts about the match before we move no, on? No. Congratulations to Ace. Congratulations to Swag. Um, you know, that was... I can't think of a better story. Uh, like hats off to you you proved everybody wrong including myself uh up until this last match i never picked ace once i did pick him to win this but you know man awesome awesome match and uh you know what andrew you have nothing to be ashamed of you played a damn good match you earned that that title shot against the winner of the title match um you are one of the future spots of the star wars league you should not be hanging your head in shame no, well, he's not only the f- future, he's the pre- present, but you know what we do in the present? We move on to talking yeah. about the next next thing. And the next next thing, Barbarian versus John Humphrey. Tell me, what do you think about, think about this one? It went exactly like I thought it would. Um, Barbarian, you know... Showed what he does. He, he, you know, he, he's not as dominating in this league as he seems to be in the singles league. So he definitely has some work to do, but he still was it's still a good performance. And Humphreys, I love the dude. Dude's so funny. His, his uh, thing in the in the opener, where he's in the shower. Oh God, I was dying. That is going to be the that that is the big takeaway from this, which is I am sorry to see Koi go so soon. Yeah, I'm sorry because. We're Cody now is, we're not his throw pillows. Oh, I I swear there's a new one that I didn't see last time. Every, every time, like I was like, yeah. wait, that's Bill Murray. I never saw Bill Murray before. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it, it's it sucks, but you know that's just again that's the, that's the thing about tournaments. Now I totally agree with. I'm using totally a lot today. What am I, a 16 year old girl? Um, I, I completely sure. agree with you about how. Uh, interesting and uh undominate uh less dominant uh barbarian is right now but i'll say he's not too far off off the pace now i think i don't know when this was filmed i assume the next round has not not been film filmed but going all the way and uh that's two tkos that he's uh supplied not supplied that he's gotten in the in this tournament alone, I think he's playing either the winner. He's playing the winner of Chance and Parker. Yep. So it'll be interesting to see when that, how he compares, uh, sizes up against one of one of them. And I'm very interested to see what he can do next. And I swear, Elvis just gets me every time. There's never been a moment that he's talking to Elvis. That shtick is yeah. still not getting old. I love it. Yeah, it, it works for him, and I'm just sitting there wondering, is his arm getting tired? It must be, right? Yeah. Like, I, it's not so much the stroking one. It's just he's constantly flexing with it. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a skinny, I'm a little skinny boy, so I can't imagine, though. Like, he's got the big muscles, and I couldn't imagine. Just like, ah, oh, that's just, that would hurt. Yeah. Just doing that the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, but no, it, it's a shtick that works for him, and you know that's that, it, that's pretty cool. Like honestly, I, the first time I saw it, I wasn't quite sure what to think about it, but it's grown on me. Yeah, I remember that that episode. That was the first episode you and I did did together. It? it was because you were like, I don't know, I don't know about this shtick, and I was like, I love it. This is all I want. I want I want him and Elvis in every match forever and ever. Yeah. And you're I, like, I, I don't know. But no, it, it's um, grown on me. It's a good shtick. Yeah. yeah. Now, very interesting the categories that get to that get chosen. I know we only have so much time, but taking Wizarding World against John Humphrey, interesting choice, given well, how he performed in the last match. That that was a. I want to prove to you that that miss was a fluke choice. That's what that was. 
Yeah, that was more, that was more to stro- That was more to appease his ego than anything else. <laughs> yeah, you know I agree. I, I I think you're right, but it also it's a good strategy taking it off the board for him. Yeah, and I think I don't think he is going to have that chance to take take something off the board against uh, either Parker or Ellison. But I think it was a. I think right now. He proved that he's doing very well. And I'm excited to see what he does next. I'm also excited to see John Humphrey back. I hope we see him again in some capacity this race. Oh, we will. You know, I think, like I said at last uh, last episode, him and Alba have found a home in the Inner Geekdom. Inner, inner Geekdom? I'd like to see him dabble back in single, single see if he's still, still got that, and obviously yeah. bring real, real rejects back. Oh yeah, you'll definitely see them. They 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 did well enough this year. You'll see them as a team next year. They're oh, they playing. could still be, they could still be in the team's tournament. We don't know. That is true. All all right. Uh, any final thoughts about that? No. This, uh, like I said, it went exactly like I thought it was. Uh, nothing really special. Nothing to to you know go home about. But uh, yeah, great. It'd be interesting to see how the barbarian will f- face up against uh, the winner of Chance and Parker. I agree with you, and I am, I'm ex- I, I love. Tur- I said it before, but I love tur- tournaments. And even though there's nothing special about about this match, I still really thoroughly enjoyed enjoyed it. All right, and I have to get going, so I'm going to be replaced by who knows yep. right now. All right, I... All right, and we are back to discuss our final match of the week. Um, joining us from beneath a pile of diapers, Lou is back for this week. I and know. also making his Schmoes of the North debut, we've got Daniel Haynes or Hayes? Hines. Hines. <laughs> Daniel Hines. Yeah. Not even close. Yeah. How are you doing, guys? <laughs> well, actually, Haynes it kind of is. Uh, it's a sort of branch family. It's an Irish thing. Names get changed a lot. <laughs> nope, fair enough. Fair enough. And I, I got my first six hours of sleep uh, yesterday in uh, two weeks, so that was that was beautiful. I, I never nice. thought uh, six hours would be so joyful. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I hear, and it's only going to get worse once they hit two and three years old. Don't 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 remind me, please. Anyways, <laughs> something to look forward to. Okay, yeah. so the final match of the week is uh, the round two match of Alex the Demon Damon versus Brandon the, the Hitman Hannah. And this yeah. was a pretty good match going down right to the five-point question. What did you guys think of the match? Well, before we start on the overall uh, match shots, there was one thing I wanted to point out. I don't know if something you guys point out in the past, but it feels for me Brandon Hannah is taking over the role of the old Ben Bateman. He kind of feels I that. I never old, noticed that. I, he, he he has that Ben Bateman oh. feel that I I, I kind of like hate, but like there's something so swell, but I hate about him. Okay. He's such a jerk, you know. And I he kind of looks like him too a bit. Yeah, oh yeah, for a sure. little think bit, his brother. But I mean, a small spoiler for this match. I've been seeing him a lot more like uh, Kalinowski was the, when he yeah. was just like running around like he ran the place, and it didn't mm-hmm. matter who was in his way, and. Yeah, he's kind of a mixture of both. I, yeah, I'd say he's a Frankenstein. Does it work though? Is another question. But he well, gives me that uh, that feeling. I think I think yes, it works. Not in terms of the match quality because that's something totally different. But from all the things I'm seeing, everybody hates on hates him now. All that jazz. He's he's doing it right. So I think it's working. Now, uh, all right. So I guess we go on the thoughts. Uh, first thought is I thought honestly and. You know, I'm happy it's the contrary, but I actually thought Hannah was going to win this before mm-hmm. the match started. Uh, as much mm-hmm. as I love Damon, I still don't think he, he can win it all. Prove me wrong for this match, that's for sure. Still don't think he's going to win it against, uh, let's say, Parker if he goes into the finals. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, my money was on Hannah. Yeah, I uh, mine was on Damon just because Damon's, a, you know, pretty much a sure thing at this point. What about you, Daniel? Oh, I I had Damon going in. Like I've been, I've been kind of paying attention to him a lot because he seems very serious about like taking all of his Star Wars knowledge and the way that he brings that knowledge in, and then just 
systematically eliminating category by category in the inner geekdom. Mm. Which, in this match, was revealed like there is a list of mm -hmm. categories that we have. So, yeah, there is a of list of movies. Speaking of which, what did you guys think of that challenge? Personally, I think it was a dumb challenge, but that's just me. Um, at first, I actually thought it was intelligent, and until Harloff like gave the explanation, well, you know, it, this is not a comic book uh, category, and also we got other things that are not comic book related, and there's a list. Mm. It, it, you know, if you have that knowledge, yeah, that's kind of dumb. You know, yeah. not knowing that knowledge sounded logical until you know, like, wake up, Hannah. Yeah, but I mean, even then, like, without all that knowledge, the Green Hornet is a movie about a hero and a villain. So, I mean, that right yeah. automatically there if it's yeah. in the like, realm, right? I mean, it it came in the mixed bag as well, which was yeah. the one of the cases to the challenge. But um, more importantly, it's a superhero movie. So yeah, exactly. It, it doesn't superheroes don't exactly have to originate from a comic book. Marvel or DC, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like the Phantom is a superhero, but he never originated in a comic book. Yeah. Uh, I think he eliminated a comic strip, but he became popular in the radio show. No, he actually also, he originated in the pulp stories. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I mean th there's one right there. You could argue the same as the shadow, and there's a whole bunch of uh of others. Mm. Um, but yeah, that that goes to show like a, a good thing that Drews didn't vote him. If there's actually the, if oh, that, yeah. that wasn't invented uh, for a storyline, uh, if there was actually a vote, thank God he didn't vote Hannah because that kind of shows uh, what kind of logic he has. Yeah. Um, and also, I, I don't know if it was fabricated or who made the decision, but I did not like the whole "I'm gonna be my own manager" thing. You know, he, he's just putting, yes, his character first and showing what he, he's made of. But put all, all that's your... That's a hard your... thing. Yeah, because that's, that's, a, a, that's oh. a disadvantage. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, like maybe Hannah went to went to him and asked to do that, but that's definitely a Har Harloff has to sign off on that. Mm. Yeah, and, on on the contrary, I thought it was a great move. Like, oh, yeah, me, me it too, just, 100%. It just, like, basically solidifies what what his character is yeah, exactly. we we know what it is mm. he's that person and a lot of people have been talking about like when he was the interim manager for ken's match and obviously all of that was brought by people too like mm. he wouldn't have just like trashed his own competitor on screen yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, one hundred percent. It plays perfectly well into his character because he's playing that old school type heel, where he's going to do things like this. And hey, if it works out for him, makes him look like a genius. If not, hey, man, gives more people reason to hate him because he's just going to play that to the hilt. Like he said, you know, I don't regret the situation, or whatever. So it, it plays perfectly well into the character. Um, now, back to the challenge for a second. Is there a scenario where we could actually have seen that challenge um, being accepted? Because I personally no. don't. Yeah. No. Um. In a singles match, when the slice was comic book movies. Okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but in an yeah, IG, in IG match, no, because like which it's comic list, movies but... is not an IG slice? Yeah. Not anymore, right. anyways. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, fair enough. Uh, and anything you guys elsewhere you guys want uh, want to talk about from that match? Um. Yeah, I want to talk about Roxy. Uh, okay. thank, thank God she has Damon. <laughs> thank God. Oh yeah, even she's she said so as much herself. Yeah, she. He, they're, 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 he's yeah. keeping Roxy alive. Yeah. Although I can't. When we'll, we'll talk about this a bit later, but I can't wait to see in the other tournaments how well she she does because uh, she. I don't think she, she probably has the less complete. Uh, also, maybe usual suspects, and even then they did the, some trades, right? But I don't think uh, they have a full team. For Roxy, uh, it's it's starting to, to to crumble down. If it was like, for how Alex. Do you, like how do you mean a full team, just roster in general, or are you talking about like for, for players she's putting into the tournament? Well, kind kind of both, right? Uh, okay. I, it doesn't feel like she has a, a complete team, meaning like uh, a, a dominant team, a backup team, oh, uh, people. Mm. I'm looking. I'm like just a little bit spoiled, like a little bit uh, preview of what's going on. I'm looking at her roster for who she put into the tournament, and it's a pretty damn good roster. But but okay, well, all right. We'll talk about it later. But again, I, I personally compare. If I look overall to swag, the then yeah, yeah. how even oh, no, you're you know right. you're Quirker right. Mercs, they they feel like they're they feel like the the dungeon right now. They're kind of yeah. hoping putting their money on two players, and then the rest is like, eh, 
yeah, I hope they get something. That's what Roxy feels. Roxy's team feels. Yeah, to me. And if if you just said, you know, if you looked at looking at both teams at the beginning of the year, you probably wouldn't have said that. Um, mm. What what say you on the topic, Dan? Yeah, um, I I like her quartet a little more than some others, which yeah. we'll kind of get into. Are are we going to do that now? Anything else on that match? I mean, yeah, Damon missed it. three questions. Hannah missed three questions. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got. There's really, there honestly wasn't much to go into this match, um, other than the whole character development with Hannah. That's really the big yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I don't well, know, like stats and stuff. Maybe Hannah, like, I, I don't know if Star Trek is a thing we knew he was good at, but that was yeah, kind of a that was a good round like, for him. And, and that was very ballsy too, because we all know from last time Damon can crush. So you missed yeah. Star Trek, yeah. they, so that really showed he has some brass. Yeah. yeah, and then with uh, Damon getting Middle Earth, I mean, like there you go. That's his strength. There's number one strength right behind Star Wars, and then he gets Star Wars for his five pointer. Go figure. <laughs> oh um, yeah. So do okay. we think Damon can beat Zipper or Kalinowski? Um, I think he can beat Zipper. KO will be a harder task. All right, but because since I don't have the brackets in front of me, like, <laughs> who's the next uh, com- uh, next matches to come, and who's Damon waiting or gonna play against? Uh, okay, or Zipper. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Or Zipper. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> or Zipper. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, Sorry, baby sleep deprived hmm. information. <laughs> Yay! Uh, freak. I, you know what? <sighs> He the zipper as much as I like the guy, he's not he's not a proven commodity enough that Damien's trying starting to the show he he's got his studying down no matter what cat or what the division he is. <laughs> KO, I, it's a flip of a coin. It, it, it can go really a last second and is draw the look. So yeah. I won't I'll reserve myself for KO, but zipper he's got it. Yeah, I mean um, there's there's a reason oh. KO is top tier. Sorry, go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, I was gonna say I I think Damon could take either of those guys. Like, yep. and I don't know how that matchup is going to go. I have both of them in my fan league team, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, but, pretty much. Um, yeah, like, I think Damon could take reasonably either of those characters. We've seen him, like, with knowledge, obviously, in Star Wars, Middle Earth, Star Trek. He's yep. knocked some big MCU questions out. Uh Seems a little low on the Harry Potter knowledge, but those are eight movies. He can watch them fourteen times by his next match. Yeah, mm. and he's got enough time. To, he got enough time to do the studying for this. Um, yeah, honestly, he's proving just how good of a player he is, and he is improving mm. every week. And it's funny, Roxy drafted him to be the Star Wars player, and he hasn't, like she said, hasn't got her one point in Star Wars this year. Is yeah. is Alex Damon the ace of Inner Geekdom? Uh, no. no, because we know what he can do. We, yeah. Uh, yeah, we know he, what he, what he can do. Um, I I don't think you can compare Damon to anyone. The closest thing would be probably Dan Merle. Yeah, mm. he's, he's the Dan Merle of the IG. I mean, I guess if he just keeps winning, yeah, he'd have to be at that point. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'd compare Ace more to, and mm. honestly, I totally forgot about this until I saw the quick clip this morning. But I could, I'd compare him to Mara from two years ago. Mm. Like literally, nobody knew about her. Uh, she came out of nowhere and swept the tournament and won the title. Mm. I, I gotta say, I, I did know about her because. Like Dan would talk about her on Screen Junkies, and I yeah. was just like, "Oh, she knows so much." Because just his like throw out like messages about like watching these movies at home, like yeah. you could tell from the get go she was going to be incredible, and she was. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, like people like us, like you and me, who watch Screen Junkies and stuff, we knew. But I mean, like the general movie sh- uh, sh- yeah, audience yeah. probably didn't. So that's what I'm saying. It's probably more comparable to that than I would say to Damon. Okay, so that is all on that match. So now we're going to talk about the tournament. And it seems like all everybody has been announced, if I'm not mistaken, right? I think there's there's one potential thing. Because KO hasn't been confirmed on corruption. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so the they only, have a is that the only fourth. No, we have also... And- Quirky There's Mercs some contentious spots. Uh, Quirky Mercs picked Franco, 
Oh, okay. Okay, so that's been obviously because I've got the graphic right here. That's obviously been added recently, then. Yes, yes, it was added like just after this graphic. Quirky okay, Mercs okay. added Franco, and Corruption added Marisol Nikki. Oh, okay. So there's yeah, one okay, spot. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, okay that, that's what the dashes are. It's contention. It's between Ethan Irvin or Jen Kemp. Are you have to play yeah. for it or just you still haven't um, decided yet? If if Ethan Irwin becomes champion, yeah. Jen Kemp will go into the tournament. And right. if he's not champion, he goes into the tournament. Why Which if you that? notice the Roca slash Merle Sabrina mm -hmm. on the yeah. Finstock. What's with the okay. question? Uh that uh, because she only plays if Roka or Merle retains the belt or gets mm. the belt in Roka's mm. case. Okay, okay. And then Sabrina, like, steps in as the fourth. But if Erwin becomes champion, Jen Kemp and Roka and Merle will all be in the tournament. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, is there anybody in the uh, on this list that surprises you? Um... Surprise, no question marks. Yes, Robert Montano, like the people we don't know. Uh, one person I'm, I'm really uh curious to see if he can really deliver because this is a make it or break it would be Jim Vivado yeah. for me. Oh, really? Okay, uh, he, he has to perform. The he's played this year, yeah, he has mm -hmm. to perform. Something has to give with him, especially you know, uh, he has to bring something for especially for rock stars. Another one, it's basically the whole rock star uh list. Jeff Snyder has to bring it as well, if not. Yeah, you're, you're you're past your duels. You retire, man. Yeah, it's true. You never <laughs> know what Schneider you're gonna get. Are you gonna get the Schneider from the Patriots? You're gonna get the Schneider that gave up on seventies, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. For me, it's David Del Rio, uh, who I was. Hmm. I forgot that he was uh, he was drafted by the Rockstars, and so that. And uh, I'd say Bonnie also surprised me. Yeah, everyone else seems pretty pretty on par. Bonnie was pretty surprising. I'm. I think I'm a little surprised at the quirky Mercs. I would have to check their specific roster, but okay. I I Harry obviously Nimrod. obviously Bibbs and the kid, but yeah, like Perry and Franco over like a couple of people that they have mm. that you know Perry. Not surprised. Yeah, she hasn't played uh, in a long yeah. time outside of the Jurassic Park, but she's one I wouldn't sleep on just because of her. I I, I know her knowledge. She's she's gonna do okay. Uh, how do you guys feel about Ben Goddard not being in? Surprised. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, I'm not. But, uh, <clears throat> he's a proven commodity. Like, yeah. take off James White. Like, at this point, you need to, to, to make sure that nothing slips up. Uh, or just take off Rachel Savocini. She hasn't had a good uh, record in singles. Ben can probably hold it, so put Ben in, keep James White, and take off uh, Silver Sweeney, in my opinion. Yeah, but is this a thing of maybe you don't want to burn out Ben? Yeah, exactly. He's True. got He's got a lot of big teams matches to play very soon, and if he plans on being a triple league player, he has a lot of studying to do in a lot of different categories for next season, and it's I'm. I can't speak for anybody, but he looks like somebody that Kate might try to sign going into next year as one of her oh, yeah. three. Uh, mm. more if she could go out and get a bigger name to come to her faction. No offense to Tom or Paul, but they're not the most like big name characters no, in the no. for, for yes, now, and, yeah, and Ben is definitely the sh the shining star for her so mm -hmm. she's not going to let him go easily yeah um, exactly th that be I had a question on my on my end uh, if you would have pick two round one matchups you would love to see now we see part of, of almost all the list uh, what would be your uh, oh yeah your, your uh, first two matches you would like to see hmm hmm I know. <clears throat> I already know my first match. Uh, <clears throat> it would take off uh, maybe two heavy hitters uh, or one of them I right off the bat. But I would love to see Paul Yama versus Barbarian. Okay. Yeah, I I think match. they're a little bit too. I think they're a little too high in the rankings. Like Paul is going to get a fave. He did just come off like a two contenders match. Yeah, hmm. I I call it a number two contenders. I don't know if that's actually what it's called. Okay, I would like to see um, Bibbs versus yeah. Whitney. 
Who? Bibbs versus Whitney. I think that would be fun. Oh. Mm, yeah, that would that be. That would be really be fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> and it is possible because Bibbs is higher ranked than Whitney. So it is possible that yeah, we can yeah. see. Yeah. Mm. And then Tom, uh, Tom versus the... Video Drew. Mm. No, that would mm. that, that, that would be unfair. <laughs> what what would be very interesting is a a Jader Paramo or mm. any of the other like rookie players going up against an Ethan Irwin because oh. he'll be the number one seed going into that tournament. Yeah. That that could be interesting. That would be a squash <laughs> match. Personally, yeah. or my, my very, very cool. <laughs> yeah, either way, yeah. My next match uh, choice would have been actually Paramo versus Andreco. Uh, I think uh, it would be a good challenge for Paramo. And Andreco is good, but he's not very like that high uh, rank. So it would also be a challenge for Andreco because he's, oh. he hasn't... He hasn't done much e either, and it's been a while he he's been doing something. So I think he would have to reprove himself with someone who has a bit of momentum. Would be uh, that would be Paramo. So that would be the, an interesting match. Okay, here's another one and for yeah. you. This is probably not a first rounder. This will probably be like a second or a third. Ethan Irwin versus the Barbarian. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, and yeah, and boy. also we got in the chat here Jim Vavida versus Roca. Yeah, as, a, as a first round matchup, as a repeat performance, don't give mm -hmm. them biopics. <laughs> yeah, and also you got Jim Vavido, who's got something to prove after his two losses this year. And honestly, what would be a better way to prove it than to take out a Hall of Famer? So if you had to pick like a big, like a dark horse character, somebody who we don't necessarily think of as the tournament winner, and this person is just going to come out of nowhere and win it. Who who would you grab? Uh, Dark Horse, maybe not. But like someone, it, probably because he, he hasn't been doing anything lately, so we kind of forgot about him. But I think he's going to re-surprise us. Will be Preston. I think Preston's going to be in the okay. finals. Mm -hmm. uh, Vinny Mancuso. Huh. Yeah? Yeah, I'm, that's, I'm going he's, off the board with that He's one. supposed to be really good. Yeah. Um, supposed to be. I, yeah, I yeah. think... Uh, Robert Montano has a very good shot at like I I don't think he's going to get a very good round one matchup but I think the way the brackets will work since they're so big the round two and three with some up at sets could bring him far in this tournament yeah 100% yep. and we all know he has upset before and, and then so I would also pick Whitney Seibold well, yeah, see, he's due. He's so due. much knowledge and his character is so great. <laughs> yeah. and, and you see, although I, by speaking with Cybold, um, I know he doesn't feel confident in singles. So I hope he brings it. Yeah. But I, I know it's, it's not his main staple. He's more of a, a team's player. Although, yeah. from I was going to say, if we flip that, I would love to, to see the Raldi go way further than uh, than people give uh, give him credit. Probably he could, because mm -hmm. the Raldi, even Cyborg itself said, like I am there to impress him. He's like the teacher and all this. I have to. I still have to learn movies from him. Yeah. He's that knowledgeable. So, uh, and going back to my question before, I would love to see a the Raldi versus a, a Rachel Silverstein matchup. Mm. That, the, the beauty thing about this tournament, looking at the announced players, is you're going to get some new stars. Mm -hmm. That's what I like about it, because you're not seeing a lot of the usual suspects. Like, you're not seeing Bateman, you're not seeing Merle. Um, just... You know, you're not seeing a lot of those those guys. Now, question you know for you, question oh, for you guys. Uh, question for you guys. Who do you think that uh, someone that a lot of people are going to put money on and is going to be uh, very quickly uh, eliminated? So someone's going to fizz out faster than we thought he would be, he would. Um, because mine's Schneider. Schneider, mine's Mark Riley. Yeah. I, okay. Let me whisper this. I wonder if it's Tom. Really? Yeah. What if? Like he's so many first round questions that he hits, and like, what if when the big pressure is coming and everyone expects him to do well, maybe he's good in the first round, but is he good without the team? Yeah. to like really get those things that he doesn't have yeah and i have one last first round matchup speaking of tom his former teammate video drew 
Yeah, I said that earlier. That would be a fun one to match. Just, just, yeah, for the char- yeah. just for the character play. Just for the character play. For the character play, mm-hmm. yes. But the match will be a massacre. That It, it would kind of be a disservice <laughs> to the dungeon. You want to yeah, give every, yeah. everyone uh, equal footing here. Now, there's mm-hmm. going to be you know moments going to be higher and lower. You can't be equal all to us. But going Tom versus Drew right off the bat. Yeah. Although, who would you like to see if we go an actual uh, plausible match performance wise who would you like uh, for both of you to see video drew, video drew go against um lawn okay mm-hmm. or lishan and miller yep yeah um I, I would actually i would like to see what she could do against uh, uh, or what sabrina ramirez could do against video mm-hmm. drew mm. yeah for sure that's the beauty. There's a lot of good potential matchups, and like I said earlier, like with so many unknown commodities in here, we're gonna see a new star uh, come out of this tournament. Um, so, uh, anything else you guys want to talk about before we wrap it up? Um, no. Also, the fact that it feels good to be doing podcasts. It's it's. Uh, it, I won't be all on every week. Uh, I'll be on when I can, but uh, it feels good to be back and to talk with Schmo down uh, people with people about Schmo down because mm-hmm. uh, it just feels lonely without you guys. Yeah, your baby yeah. girl doesn't know what the hell you're talking about. Who's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about you, Daniel? Do you have any final thoughts? Oh no, no. I've I've had kind of like Lou, but in a different way, like. A, a pretty hell of a last two weeks like very oh yeah yeah i i haven't been able to get a lot done really so <laughs> yeah, <fair laughs> nothing enough, really to enough. promote <laughs> yeah um okay so uh lou where can everybody find you in bed <laughs> <laughs> good to know daniel <laughs> Uh, mostly on the Schmoes of the North Facebook page, and I also like run some fantasy leagues there that will are kind of closed at the moment, but next season will open with some new tweaks and bigger and better. Right Let's on, see. right on. Mm-hmm. And as usual, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter at soda underscore the underscore saxman. You can find me uh, running the social uh, the Media Sweaties Network Twitter feed, and uh, I'm gonna keep keep on teasing until it happens. We will have something special coming down the pipe for you there. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it outside of also finding me on the Schmozo North Facebook page. So with that, uh, I hope everyone has a good, uh, good night and, uh, we will bid you adieu.